Dating in America is brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. The Golden Diamond Source has been in business for nearly four decades and is one of the largest family-owned jewelry stores in America. We have the largest selection of white and fancy colored diamonds and gemstones you'll find anywhere. We also have private areas for VIP viewings. Only at the Golden Diamond Source. Everyone has a story to tell. It's my mission to tell it. Unscripted. Unedited. We are on the record. Hi everyone, I'm Serena Fazan and welcome to On the Record, the Dating in America series. You know, I'm in love with love and love this series, but this show really, I feel like, should fall into the Love in America series because I have Mark Royals here, Lynn Thompson, together for a decade now. Yes. Very romantic. Slightly over, yeah. Yes, and so, and also let me say, huge, huge, huge fan, Mark Royals, I'm sure that name is very familiar played for 15 years in the NFL, including for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, my old stomping grounds as well, uh, New Orleans. I did. <laughs> you did. And uh, yeah, so, but Lynn, who is a fashion model, can you tell? <laughs> can you tell? I can tell. <laughs> Does that so annoy you sometimes when like, oh, yeah, Mark Royals, I know him. He played with the NFL. Are you like, what about me? Yeah, well, it has been different though too, because he used to get like every time we go into a place, he would be the one that people would notice. And now we're kind of like sharing the spotlight because people would see me. We're, we're, not, <laughs> we're not sharing the spotlight. It's, it's all on her. I, I stand behind her a lot of times when we're walking through crowds, and I'm watching the guys. They're just like, and I'm like, bro, I'm right here. I can see you. <laughs> Looking yeah. at her. <laughs> and you know, when I asked her to just now about, oh my gosh, you know, like everybody's talking about Mark, she, you are so humble and so sweet that that is not even in your, it, what is that called, Mark? It's not even in your bones. You know, English is my fifth language, so I get a little confused. Yeah, like to <laughs> me, to me, her looks are not her greatest asset because she's such a sweet souled person. And it, it came across from the first time I ever met her because I, I, I told you the story, we met through volleyball circles. And when I first walked up and saw her, it just kind of oozed out of her that she was just this kind, nice, friendly, humble person. And that, that really spoke to me. And you guys have been That's together sweet. for, again, 10 years. January 27th was your, your first date. Um, and you met organically, right, Lynn? I mean, both of you were divorced and not really looking, not looking at all not looking at all so no. can you can you share that oh well every friend of mine every family member they all had the perfect guy for me and so I was like no 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 you know I kept turning down like everybody and then um I just pretty much just wanted to just give up on men completely until his ex-wife's best friend is okay hold on his right. ex-wife <laughs> best friend came to me while at a volleyball turn or practice and she says i have the perfect guy i'm like okay you too and she just started no no really just listen to me you know like and they started like talking about him and stuff and i um just about his person how he was how of a father he was you know i didn't know that he was in the nfl until our Third date. Third date. Oh. I didn't, I didn't play that card at all. I was like, I mean. Because I, I probably wouldn't have dated him. Because really? Because the model and the football guy, you know, is kind of like it's such a cliche. Oh, my God. The funny thing is, is that um, I told her more stuff on that date oh, than gosh, I told yes. anyone. But the but NFL thing, I, I didn't bring up and she didn't ask. I, I didn't see it had any relevance. So let me ask you though, okay, so because it is, I mean, what is it? It's 0.02% of the, the people make it into, yes. into pro sports. So for you not to bring it up, I have to say, I, I really do commend you for that. Yeah, and I, I shared with you off uh, camera, <clears throat> I knew her backstory and my whole intent for going out with her and taking her on a date was, I wanted her to have a great evening and just enjoy a night out with no agenda. And she probably got more information than she wanted the first night, but I told her everything. And I didn't know that she knew most of it already through the friend that introduced mm -hmm. us, but I told her all the, all the warts, she knew them all. I told her, and- It was very refreshing. And I think she freed up at that point to tell me all the things. So, 
Six hours of dating and talking, we learned a lot about each other in one night. So A six-hour date, and I had a chance you know, to talk to them before the show. This show is unedited, unscripted, but sometimes we have some moments before the show. Lynn brought another couple with her on the first The one that set us up. <laughs> she did. The, 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 they left. Yeah, like half, within you know. like three minutes, they he started showing me pictures of his kids. I started showing them of mine, and and she's like, "Yeah, we're we're gonna go now." Like we're good. Like yeah. you guys are good. Yeah. So, yeah but ter, ter, I mean, she she hadn't dated in eighteen years. That's how long you were married, right? I was since I was eighteen was well, with since my she was eighteen ex husband, and then uh, we were married for seventeen years, and so. He was the first guy that I've dated since I was 18. Wow. Me. So he's the only guy yeah. that you have dated since, since your marriage. Since the divorce. Since, since, since the divorce. Wow. Was, yeah. And that was 11 years ago. So. so I would be remiss, though, not to go back to this point. <clears throat> Let's go back to your wife's best friend. Yeah. So, so clearly, I mean, I think that says a lot, right? So you guys, I, you and, and Kim, who I'm also a huge fan of, met her numerous times, your your ex-wife, um, to have her best friend want to set you up with Lynn, I think that speaks volumes about your relationship. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And um, her name is Terry, and she, she knows me about as well as anybody. And I think that helped in the scenario because she could sort of vouch for me. And even though I've made a lot of mistakes and, and did in my marriage as well, um, Lynn knew all of those things. And I think that, that helped diffuse the situation a little bit. And as I shared with you earlier, I never, the reason I shared so much on the first date was I didn't want her, if it progressed from there, I didn't want her to find out stuff six months later that may alter how she felt about the situation. Oh. So I just laid it out there. I mean, I didn't throw up on her, but I told her pretty much everything. And then she, she reciprocated. And I think it, it set the tone for safety to have the conversation. Mark, I think you're so hard on yourself when you say, you, when you talk about, oh, you know, all the mistakes I've made. Don't you think he's hard on himself? Because we all make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. I, it takes I, a lot of every, all the blame yeah. on him. You're guess, such a class I, act. I guess I have a, a perfectionism in my blood or whatever, and I base things on how they should have been. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to, to get to a place of forgiveness for things, which I'll, you know, we don't need to really discuss that. But... Um, it's how I deal with things. It's how I process, and I I try to I try to live my life at a certain standard. And if I felt like I've dipped below that, then yeah, I've, I've been hard on myself for that. Well, that's probably honestly what's made him so so made you so successful as a pro player because perfection. I mean, per perfection is everything. But back to the two of you, <laughs> which is perfect too. All right, did they not look like Cinderella and Prince Charming? Okay, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I'm like. <laughs> We're going to get to the You're point. <laughs> it's true. We're going to get to the point where we have like viewers that can actually, you know, like weigh in during the show. And I'm sure if they could right now, that's what they would say. But I would encourage people to comment after the show runs. So, Lynn, do you remember the precise moment when you laid eyes on Mark? And Mark, do you? We could start with you. <laughs> the first time when you, he was introduced to me. Yeah, like when you first saw him. Oh, yes, it was. It was at a volleyball tournament, and he was coming up with his little sidekick, his daughter, six years old, wearing the cutest little dress and cowboy boots, looking up at her daddy, like, oh. <laughs> where just like, oh, he was like the king to her. And I'm like, whoa, wait. <laughs> That's him? I was like, because all I saw was a headshot of him. Uh -huh. And so I didn't see everything. It was actually a and broadcasting photo, so I had yeah. makeup and stuff makeup. on. And she's just I'm like, like, I'm used to that. Guys wearing makeup, you know? So, I'm like, makeup. <laughs> so, then yeah. he, so then he walks out. So the whole out. body and everything come out, because she says, yeah, he works out and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, he works out. It's good. I'm like, but then... Oh, yeah, he works out because you saw, like, abs coming through his shirt. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that, that guy definitely works out. But um, just the way his daughter was looking at him, too, it was just, like, uh, so endearing and so just so sweet and made, like, his aura just so glowing. And I, I feed off of good auras. And so, so I think he, he kind of had a little bit of me right there. I, I think it was his daughter, but... It was yeah, my secret weapon worked she, for sure. It's definitely been my, my... But as I walked up, um, I shared with you earlier, mm -hmm. 
she was standing there, and then one of her friends, who's an attractive woman as well, was standing there, and I was just like, hmm. Oh I was kind of like, I hope it's a little left. <laughs> And it was no disrespect. Wait, did, you, did you not know which one it, I, it was? I've never, a tall blonde that's sitting like... I've never seen a picture of her. I didn't Google her. I didn't do any of that stuff because, as I shared, I, I didn't have an agenda with her. I was just going to meet her and see if there was a fit, and we'd go have a nice dinner or whatever. So when we walked up, again, it, um, I had a feeling it was her, but I was like, I hope it's kind of leaning toward the left. And then we, uh, we spoke briefly, but there was, um, there was definitely something there, I think, from both of us at least an interest level. And she was just new to dating again because she hadn't dated since she was 18. And I was not interested in really getting into anything. And then <clears throat> that's why I think it's so good and why it works so well is because there wasn't an agenda or a plan. We weren't searching for what we found. And it just, it, it was just there. People that knew us, they vouched for us. They, 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 they um, told us all the things that we, they thought we should know about each other. And then it was up to us to figure it out from there. Now, I've had a lot of time after the divorce to evaluate what love is. Mm -hmm. what, what am I looking for? And what kind of person do I want to be when I find it? And that's what my focus was. I was trying to become the best person I could. And I just felt confident that I would interact or intersect with someone who was a good fit. And it happened when I wasn't looking for it. And here you guys are. I know when you search for it, sometimes you don't find it. So Mark, back to that day though on the volleyball court and you said you knew that there was some t type of chemistry, but was, do you think you knew though deep down that you'd be in a long, uh, a long term relationship when you saw Lynn that day? Uh, I, I don't think so because I, I wasn't thinking in those terms and there was so much to be discovered because I didn't really know her other than hello, how are you? And we, we talked briefly. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't have uh, any thoughts about what it might develop into, but I was uh, willing to find out, and I think she was too. And, and again, I mean, she gets tons of opportunities and she just wasn't at a place where she was ready to accept them. So having said that, she was at a place now where she was open to the possibilities, and I think that's kind of where things began. And so how long after you guys met, uh, when you guys actually saw each other on the volleyball court, did you go out on your first date? It was two weeks. How, two weeks how many days was it before I called you? Oh, three. He did the whole three-day thing. Oh. And that wasn't intentional. It really wasn't. <laughs> wait, wait. What, what is it about? It, what is it about, like, the three-day thing? Do you think there really is such a thing? Well, as they the don't want to feel too eager, you know. You have mm -hmm. to do it. Well, that's the thing that I was, um, I, did, I assumed that she probably got a lot of attention, a lot of people mm -hmm. coming at her, and I didn't want to be that guy. So it, it, cool. it wasn't a game or anything. It was mm -hmm. just, I, I was responding on how I felt like I was pushed to respond mm -hmm. without any agenda, but just, okay, this seems right. Let me, let me pursue this, and, and that's kind of how I proceeded. So I didn't want to... I just met you, I'm gonna call you in an hour and then like bombard you and she goes, oh, no, this guy's desperate, you know? Oh, yeah. So this is really interesting because you open up, you open up a door, a point, yeah. about playing it right, no pun intended. <laughs> do, you think, you <laughs> do you think, do you nice. think that men sometimes do need to play it right? Like what if Mark had called you within an hour of meeting or something? Do you think that might have changed your opinion? It's hard to say, yeah, I know. Yes. It's like, yeah, it is hard to say because I don't know. It's because here you guys sit. To, here you guys he did sit today. Way. Yeah, maybe I should rephrase. I would always take his call because right. I know him. Right now, right. So maybe let me rephrase this question. And maybe from a man's perspective, yeah. right, Mark? Is it important for a guy to play it right? Well, by playing it right, I think that is very accurate. But what is right? Mm -hmm. Playing games is not right. Yeah. I don't think game, game is playing is right. But I think playing it right is important. And it's a, it's a situation where you have to ask yourself, what are you in it for? What are you looking for? What do you want out of it? What are you willing to do? And then move forward on those instincts. And I think that, that solves a lot of issues. But the game playing, is it, it, that's what everybody does. And what's the point? Mm -hmm. it, you're, mm -hmm. you're telling things that aren't true. And you're building a potential relationship on potential lies. Oh, that, that doesn't make sense to me. And here you guys are by playing it right 10 years later <laughs> with that we're going to go to a break and when we come back more on the love story of mark royals and lynn taunts and i'd like to call them cinderella and prince charming <laughs> okay stay with us <laughs>
We'll be right back. Thinking about getting engaged, planning to upgrade your wedding ring, or finally getting that Rolex? The Golden Diamond Source can help you in many ways. You can start a layaway plan for only 10% down and six monthly payments. Take advantage of our three to five year interest-free financing. Or you can trade in your old broken jewelry and use it towards a new purchase. Come to the Golden Diamond Source and find that perfect gift for the ones that you love. Gems with Them is our way to teach you about the birthstones and the different color gemstones each month represents. Ruby is the birthstone of July, and when we think about red, we think about ruby. A ruby is the most valuable gemstone, and its value increases based on the color and quality. And ruby gets its vivid red color from the element chromium, which is where emeralds get their beautiful bright color as well. It's a great gift to give someone you care about. Come to the Golden Diamond Source or visit us on social media to learn more about birthstones. Hi everyone, welcome back to Dating in America. You know, it was so funny right before we went to the break, of course, you know, I compared Lynn and Mark to Cinderella and Prince Charming. And Lynn said, does not surprise me at all that you were offered a role to play Cinderella. When I was 21, yes. Does that surprise you? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so I have to say something else that's mm -hmm. very, very cute. So um, you played with Martine Grammatica. Yep. So Martine Grammatica and his wife Ashley officially kicked off the Love in America and Dating in America oh, series. Gosh. No pun intended again. But Lynn was so cute. Like before, before you sat down, she said, you know, I watched several of the shows prior to coming on the show, which I so appreciate you doing that. And she said, but are we really like a dating in America? <laughs> I think we're more of a love in America couple. And I would like to say on the record, for sure, without a doubt, you both do fall into that category. But what we've done for the series, love in America are people who are, you know, officially married, like married. Yeah. But you guys yeah. have been together longer than a lot of people yeah. have been married. Yeah, it's really, um, I don't think any of us, the two of us, thought in the beginning, the early stages, that we would be in 10 years later. Because I know that I'm a long day in a lot of ways. <laughs> oh. And I give her a lot of credit because she, she navigated that. She never tried to alter or change me in any way, ever. She just was who she was. And it just it inspired me, made me want to be better at a lot of things, including being a, a better dad a better friend, just all of it. Like I, it really made me self-examine, and it's been it's been a, a blessing for me to have changed as much as I have through the years. And it, and again, it wasn't it wasn't her trying to you know chip me and mold me to something. She was just loving up on me and let me be what I was going to be. And hopefully, it's enough. Lynn, react to that because you even said too. The rest of the story was you also said he is my true love. Oh yes, yeah, he's. <laughs> I get smitten by him every time he looks at me. I know it, oh, it's that's weird. So, no, that <laughs> isn't weird. Do you really? Like oh, I do, man. Sometimes it just brings tears to my eyes. You have tears in your eyes right now. <laughs> like why? Like know. why are you tearing up right oh, now? Oh, I know. I just, I just know he's my forever, and I'm just so thankful, like every day that we're together. Oh my God. It's just like he's my heart. So you know, from a women's from a a female perspective, some mm -hmm. people might say, um, gosh, but they've been together for 10 years, you know, why aren't they married yet? And there's nothing, no, I, no, I, I'm we, not. We hear it from everybody. Yeah, and you know what, and honestly, all the, time. Of, all the time. All right, yeah. so when you guys hear that, what is your, what is your, what is your reaction to that? I, I just say, I know he's my forever, and it's just, when it happens, it happens, but we're just taking every day by, you know, yeah, there's, there's nothing that I would do different married to her that I'm doing yeah. not married to her. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one thing that I decided when I got divorced was I was never going to do things according to other people's timelines. Yeah. Because it is very typical that if you've been together a certain amount of time, you get the jokes. When are you putting a ring on that? When are you doing all the mm -hmm. stuff? But it's not, it's not for other people to decide. It's for us to decide. And We'll know when the timing's right to move forward. And plus, when you've, <clears throat> we've both been married, we both have kids. When you've, when you've gone down that road before, it, it's, um, I don't know if the desire, or I don't even know how to say it, is as prevalent to want to jump on that train again because they didn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes that finality of marriage can alter or change things. I don't know that it would, but again, I'm, I'm not going to base 
my decisions on what's next on someone's opinion or what they think is best for us. We have to decide that. Well, honestly, you know, I, have, I interview so many couples, so many single people on the show, and I can say 100% on the record that the two of you <laughs> seem to have a, str a stronger relationship than even some of the married couples that I've talked to. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be married right in the traditional sense. But do you feel there's a lot of societal pressure on that? Oh, there is, especially with close friends and the family. The family was is always the biggest every time they see me or if we go out to dinner, like, did you get a ring yet? <laughs> like, ah, oh, you know. Is that annoying? <laughs> it, is, it is annoying. For lack of a better word. It is because some people don't know where to draw the line. They come in too hot and mm -hmm. they just carry on and on and you're just like, be like, I'm an officiator, you know, I can officiate right now, we can do it, you know, and I'm like, okay, no, we're good. <laughs> but, but the journey's been uh, both unsuspecting and great because to find something you're not really specifically looking for and then it turn into what this has turned into, mm -hmm. that's why I know in my soul that it's right because we weren't pretending and we've been forthright from day one and she knows me as well or better than anybody in my life. And there's nothing I wouldn't tell her or share with her. Yeah. And I think she feels the same I way. I think that that's the biggest thing with us is like, I have 100% trust in, to him and the, from him. And I've never had that like with, with anyone, you know? So anything he tells me, I know it's going to be the truth because he just, yeah, I feel that, right? But you know what, Serena, it's interesting. Um, this will sound weird, but by being divorced, it prepared me for now. Yeah, I think that's and me too. And the reason it did is because when I say I self-evaluated after the divorce, I mean, I, I tore myself apart mm -hmm. and tried to kind of um, rebuild in the most positive way possible. Accepting blame, which um, I'm, you said earlier, maybe I give myself mm -hmm. too much, but to me, that's how you get past those moments is you, you're accepting of them and you're honest about them and then you can move forward from them. And that's what happened. And that's, that's the journey I was on before I met her. And so by trying to become the right person, um, I found the right person. Oh my gosh, that line by trying to, oh, I, that is yeah. so sweet, yeah. isn't yeah. that wonderful? Yeah. Well, I have to say, so <laughs> Doug Smith is a very good, Love great him. friend of mine. He's, awesome. He's a wonderful friend. Yeah. He's a DuPont winner, an incredible journalist, a friend of yours. And so I said to him, I said, Doug, I really want Mark Royals to do multiple shows with us, right? But I want him, I want him to come on Dating in America. And he's like, oh, Serene, come on. He's too private. There's no way he's going to go on Dating in America. But this is what, I mean, it melted my heart when you said, I want to do the show because I hope that my story can help other people out there. And it's just what you were just talking about. Yeah, and I think it runs a lot deeper, too, because we've had the discussion that um, there's, there's finding love after divorce, but there's also how do you make the, the life that you have blend with someone else's life? including the ex-spouse, the kids, and all that. So I shared with you earlier, my kids got to know her organically through volleyball. It wasn't like I was bringing someone in, into their life and now this woman's going to take over for their mother or whatever kids think. Mm -hmm. I was so protective in the beginning of that relationship that I didn't do a lot of things that she wanted me to do with her family because I, didn't, I never wanted my kids to look at her and go, that's the woman's taking my daddy away. Daddy. Don't know if that would have happened, but I was protective of that too. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say her patience made this all work because I mean, I was, I was difficult at times. And I wasn't intentionally being that mm -hmm. way, but I was just being protective of or how I saw my life and, and my surroundings and how I was gonna make all that um, work. And gel together. Mm -hmm. And gel together. So when speaking to that, how hard was it at that time? Was it difficult for you? And what advice would you give to other women out there? Um, well, my yeah, hard time, like what he said, is like every time that we have the family get-togethers, like the Easter's, Thanksgiving's and stuff that he wasn't able to go to. And so my family's all about like family united, you know, mm -hmm. and everything. And so they're like, why isn't he coming? Does he not like us? And I'm like them getting to know like he does have a family of his own. He has to go where they go, you know. They're like, well, bring him over. We can have everybody because that's how my family is. But it's different because you just want them to 
like he said, not let them feel like I'm taking them away from their their time and. Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's so many people because I'm a private person, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Doug alluded to that, but I'm very private and um, a lot of people misread me and think things about me like he's this way or this way or whatever. She's had friends that would say things that weren't kind because I was just I'm quiet and private. Um, and I'd be like, just once spend they spend time with, with me, <laughs> if I can spend time with someone, because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, a, like a reality person, no game playing, mm -hmm. no lies, no, it's just not my mm -hmm. thing. And people place judgment on you based on what they think you are. And so yeah. some of her friends have, have had bad opinions of me until they spent time with me. From just from, hearsay of other people. From what, yeah. what they may have heard, or mm -hmm. he was a football player, so he's this based yeah. on that. That's not always accurate. So those are the kind of things that I was trying to, to navigate with people. And then, you know, I think if, if people, if I spend time with you, you're going to get the real me, and then you can make a decision on whether, you know, I'm your friend or not. Well, the word that comes to my mind when it comes to you is class act from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah. No, yeah, honestly. And so when Lynn, when you were talking about that, like, the, like early on with the Easter's and the holidays mm -hmm. and everything, and Mark not being there perhaps, but that shows your patience, right? Yes. And when I, you love someone, I can you share patient. that? Yeah, and can you share that? Like when you love someone. It, the, patience is a huge thing in any relationship, patience and trust and stuff. Which I've learned a lot from yeah. patience. He's, he's definitely had a, short patience when I first knew him. <laughs> so you got to tell her the story about when you first decided you thought you were falling in love with me. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Because that's a good yes. one. The that was at situation. another volleyball yeah. tournament, and he was sitting there, and he was um, prepping his daughter, uh, you know, on the She's side. a setter, so I was warming so, her up yeah, before. Warming up. And so he was doing that. I watched him. He did that for, like, you know, 15 minutes, and then he had his... Um, sick daughter that was laying on three chairs oh. so then he is done with that one daughter comes over to puts the other daughter on her his lap and then is record rubbing her head and then recording while with the iPad of his and I was just like wow and, you know I was like yeah I I'm over like He's the I'm one. I'm done. He's the one. Yes. <laughs> and how long was that into the relationship? Uh, six months. Six months. Uh, and I, so we're already out of time, but that line, Mark, when you said being your best self, trying to find your best self, you found your true life partner. And after this, after six months, just watching him, you guys are out of a fairy tale. We could spend hours with you. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great story. Uh, we've lived it and we try to do things the right way. And hopefully people will be responsive to what they see and maybe think of their situation in a different light. That's what we're hopeful. Well, you guys are for sure going to come back because we've decided to do part two of this uh, Dating in America, Love in America series. Sure. Oh, Anytime, my gosh. we'd love to come back. It was so wonderful having you guys. I'd like to say to the audience, too, if there is a couple you would like to recommend or if you would even like to be on the show, just email us. Um, email is right there. Also, feel free to share the show on social media platforms were on every single one of them and we're also on roku uh back here in the studio mark royals lynn thompson again thank you so much but can i just call you cinderella and prince charming for now <laughs> sure, sure. We'll take it. <laughs> i'm gonna Thanks call you guys Serena. i appreciate it thank you yeah. so much for being here and thank you everybody stay safe Gems with Them is our way to teach you about the birthstones and the different color gemstones each month represents. Ruby is the birthstone of July. And its value increases based on the color and quality. Come to the Golden Diamond Source or visit us on social media to learn more about birthstones.